Well, hello again, I'm Maurice Barrett and I've got 10 minutes with you, so let me start the clock, not waste any more time. Okay, the clock's going. I want to talk about two commissions that Jesus gave to his 11 apostles after he risen from the dead. Most people know the first one, but let me read it to you. It's from Mark chapter 15, from verse 14 to 20. Afterwards, Jesus appeared unto the 11, so there's only the 11 there, as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not that which, which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, so this is not to the 120, this is just to the 12. First thing he said was, go into all the world. Two, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptised shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And three, these signs shall follow those that believe. And then he gives the signs. In my name they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And they, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the commission. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And the apostles went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. That's the end of the gospel. So they put into practice what Jesus said and the signs followed them. All right, let's go through it again. The first thing he said was, go into all the world. So that's the sign and that's the commission to an apostle, just the 11 apostles, go into all the world. So... They're not told to preach the gospel in the church. I believe that when you're sent out, it's to the whole world. The gospel isn't to bring people into the house of God and preach to them. Jesus says, go into the world. When we leave the church and go outside, then the signs and wonders should follow. Then when they accept Jesus, when they reconcile to God, we can bring them into a building or in a house or wherever, and we can... Uh, teach them the second commission but this is the first one to go out into the world so it's to go out from the church out from the comfort zone into the world that's the first thing the second is they preach the gospel the gospel is a good news that's grace through faith for salvation to be reconciled to God that's the message and the third thing is that signs will follow so that should happen if you are to go out into the world, you call yourself an apostle and there's no signs and wonders, there's something wrong. If you're an apostle and expect people to come to you, into your church, there's something wrong. You're supposed to go out into the world, as the early church did, preach in the marketplaces, the nightclubs, the pubs, wherever. So these are the signs that follow them. A. Cast out devils. Number two, B, speak with new tongues. C, take up serpents. That doesn't mean you, you practice taking up serpents. It's like Paul. If a serpent gets hold of you, you shake it off. It, it, it won't have any effect on you. And if you drink any deadly thing, it won't harm you. So that, that's protection. I've linked those two together. And the third one, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I can't find any mandate in the Bible where we lay hands on Christians when they're sick. It's when you go into all the world. There's a mandate in the church. Is any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church. Anoint with oil. So anointing with oil is for the sick in the church. For the outsiders, we lay hands on the sick. It didn't say lay hands on devil-possessed people. It said cast them out. That's an order. You have power and you cast them out. There's, there, there's nothing wrong with laying on of hands, of course. They laid on, hands on the people and ordained them and sent them out and laid hands on them. But they didn't lay hands on anyone when they were sick. They, they anointed with oil. All right, I think everyone knows that commission and I don't think people would argue with what I've said. But there's a second commission and it's to the 11 disciples explicitly after he rose from the dead. Now, this one's from Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. So let me just read it to you. 
Then the eleven disciples, there we are again, went away into Galilee, unto a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and the earth. Therefore, because I have received all power, I am commissioning you. Go Number one, go into all nations. Number two, baptizing them in the name, the character of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And three, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you even to the end of the world. Amen. So let's look at this second commission. It's to all the world, go to all nations, so that's the same. You must go throughout the whole world. But it doesn't say signs and wonders. It said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. Well, I did a 10-minute blog on this scripture, and I argued that these are three separate baptisms. Jesus wasn't talking about water baptism. When you're baptized in water, then you're baptized into Christ. Paul teaches. And in the New Testament, everyone baptised everyone in the name of Jesus, never in the, the Trinity, never in the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I believe it's three baptisms. You're reconciled to God, you're baptised in water, into Jesus, and you're baptised in the Holy Ghost. So that's what the, the eleven were supposed to do to all nations. And thirdly, teach them whatsoever I've told you. Well, this can be condense into the Sermon on the Mount. I believe that the whole of the teachings of Jesus are in the Sermon on the Mount. I believe all the epistles, every letter, really only complements and explains Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. I believe the Sermon on the Mount is the manifesto for discipleship. And I think the church neglected it at its peril. So have you understood the two commissions? The first one, evangelists, apostles, they go into all the world, they preach the gospel with signs and wonders, and people accept Jesus. And then you go round and you make disciples and teach all that Jesus told us. Did you notice the difference? The first commission said, go into all the world and preach the good news. The second commission didn't say preach at all. It said teach, and there's a big difference. Preaching is dogmatic. It's a statement. You need Jesus. You can have your sins forgiven. It's unambiguous. But teaching is different. Teaching is reasoning. You must allow people to question when you're teaching. It's not dogmatic. It's reasoning with people. Judge what I say, as Paul said. One speak, the other judge. So this is the second commission, and I believe the church neglect this. We make converts, and then they sit in the church for the next 30 years and learn church doctrines, but they don't become like Jesus. They don't become disciples because, well, Jesus said, it's a straight gate and a narrow way, and few find it. This is the way of discipleship. The broad way is the way of the followers. They're saved, they've got the ticket to heaven, but they never become like Christ. They never renew the mind and start thinking like Christ. They still think like the world after 20 years of being a Christian. Well, I want to give you a testimony from my own experience and that of my father. My father had a dramatic conversion and he had a dramatic ministry. He, he, he was uh, blessed with the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and uh, I saw miracles and healings and signs and wonders. Amazing things I saw. I saw every kind of sickness healed. Bar the dead raised, I saw everything. Creative miracles, it was wonderful. And he went all over the world holding these crusades, and thousands upon thousands of people were reconciled to God because of the signs and wonders that attracts the crowds, as, as miracles do. But after... 20 years, and, and the church was now sort of 400 strong. We had 50 decisions every week at one time, but people were coming from all over the country, from all over the world, and so the church never grew above that because they went back to their own cities. But one year my dad said, instead of the August crusade which we had, where we had a month's crusade and signs and wonders, he said, this 
crusade, God spoke to me and told me I'm not going to build solid Christians on miracles and signs and wonders and emotions. That's great for attracting the crowds. It's great for healing the sick, for getting converts. But God told my father, if you want to build solid Christians, the signs and wonders are not the way. And so he said, I'm going to preach for a whole month, six nights a week, as though it was a divine healing crusade. Don't tell the sick to come. Don't tell other churches, this is for you. I'm going to make disciples. And he began to preach the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, 7. Well, he told me afterwards, he calls me Mo, Mo, Morris, my name, Mo for short. He said, Mo, I didn't know how I was going to preach for 24 sermons just on the three chapters. But you know, at the end of the, the period, he'd only got through the eight verses of the Beatitudes and it devastated us. It devastated my wife and a few other people. And he said, I'm going to preach this now until I finish. So every Sunday morning before communion, he preached the Sermon on the Mount. It took five years. But it changed my life beyond all recognition. And that's my life's work now. I'm not an evangelist. I refuse to do crusades. My whole life is spent making the disciples this second commission. I hope I've helped you. The time's run out. The bell's going to go. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.